When I say broken, busted, and not even play tested, fuck. These are the exotics that completely broke the game of Destiny. No, I don't mean this gun. No, I don't mean this dumb gun. No, I don't mean you. There's just a lot of busted shit in Destiny, huh? This video isn't about the weapons, which always seem to get something said about them. Actually, this video is about the exotic armor, something that over time has become an evolved process of nuance. In Destiny, no longer is it about heavy weapons doing damage. Now it's about get weapon plus armor to max out damage. This isn't perfect, of course, with Atrax getting killed in two supers worth of damage, bosses getting melted by these fish boots, Sid the Sloth cooking bosses over and over again. Those are just the more recent examples. I'm here today to take you back to the root of the good problem. I'm here to show you what it meant to have power fantasy turned into reality. I'm here to tell you about the most broken exotics in Destiny history. See, I said the title of the video. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. Atrax 1 merch will be available for a limited amount of time. Get it while you still can in color. Black and white will be the only option available forever after that. So make sure you don't miss your window on this limited time drop by the wonderful Nogi Sun. And make sure you subscribe. Smile, smile, smile. Every broken, busted, and dusted exotic has an origin story. Armor. The stuff that says you are a non-donkey-brained gamer because you know that yellow armor goes on you and is a part of a build. These pieces of armor for today's video didn't need a proper build to break destiny. Actually, they just did what they wanted and everyone else had to wait for them to drop themselves. There was nothing game-breaking about armor from Destiny 1. Now, a non-gentle gamer could point to the bones of Ao giving hunters an extra jump. Graviton forfeit giving players extra movement without using a perk in the tree. And Twilight Garrison giving Titans mid-air movement, propelling Titan skating to be even faster. But none of these are broken, Dumbo. These are just movement options for a little extra fun, giving the players that idea that there's just a little bit more to learn, to outmaneuver someone else. I would say the closest thing to broken might have been the Warlock's Helmet, Obsidian Mind, which gave you more Nova Bombs for killing enemies with Nova Bombs. But even then, I wouldn't call that game breaking since the super isn't a boss melter. So Destiny 1 just didn't have busted armor. Destiny 2 is where we start to push the line a little bit in that first year. The painful era. You know the one I'm talking about. Year 1. Exotics like Orpheus Rig, which gave almost full super for a few tethered ads. Wormhus Crown, giving the player who thought to press a button twice in their controller full health and Skull of Dire Ahamkara, becoming a stronger version of Obsidian Mind from Destiny 1. Luna Faction Boots not only made you have extra range and quick reloads, but instead Bungie gave it anime speed reloads, so you just... Uh, uh, yeah, you just, you just didn't, didn't actually reload, it just auto-reloaded. Titans? Well, Titans. Die. Look, the point is that although these exotics were strong, even pushing the boundaries of potentially broken, they weren't. These are the reason why I wanted to make this video, especially with all the seasonal exotics we have today. It's high time you know about these. Short work of bosses, the crucible being a toddler's MS Paint drawing, Gambit looking like someone spit on an all black screen, and raids? <laughs> These exotics did it all for almost no thought put into a build. Exotics that just needed one, maximum two steps to make the game change forever. So let's meet them. C1, 
Fuzzy to Forsaken, Bungie went, Hey guys, we heard you like exotics being rare, so here you go. You won't have them for five months. <coughs> oh, oh, except that one friend who calls Destiny a dead game then buys every DLC. Uh, yeah, they, they can have all the exotics. Exotics in today's age have every source to get them. You can get them from killing some doofus on Earth, guaranteed from a doofus in a Nightfall, even specific from a doofus in a Lost Sector, but for the real chads. Twitch.tv slash FNF 1997. Go there and get free exotics. Use your Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime. Primer's on the table. It's safe to say things have changed since 2018. In direct opposition from Vanilla Destiny 2, Forsaken had some of the rarest exotics the game had ever seen. For what reason, though? Sales! Forsaken grabbed exotics by the balls and cranked them to 11 if you were lucky enough to get them. Let's start with Hunters off the rip. Shards of Galanor was introduced with the new subclass Blade Barrage, and shards were supposed to give you some super energy for hitting a target with the barrage. However, in their initial release, shards was giving full super for hitting some of the knives on targets. You want to talk your shit? Shards of Galanor. This one would later be patched to only refund half the super, and with Blade Barrage itself getting gutted pretty substantially, these don't get used much outside of Mayhem, Gambit, and uh, for some reason, Atheon challenges. Now come, my dear Dusseldorf, we have much more to discuss. Like how Gwiz Invest, a hunter exotic, that you just, you, you just, you just didn't leave the super. And I just wanted to say that the Spectra Blades and Gwiz Invest is literally broken right now when you pair the two together. And I want you to just watch, watch the hit registration that happens, watch the time that you are, when I go cloaked and I'm invisible, watch how slow my super drains, and also watch how much damage I can tank while in the super. It's just incredible. So I'm telling you right now, if you have um, the Gwiz Invest, and you have the full hunter subclass unlocked, make sure you hop on there and use it because I guarantee you it is getting reworked and changed. All you had to do was get one kill with this thing and keep dashing over and over again, giving you super with each time you dashed. We talked about how Prometheus Lens was never play tested, but I mean, come on. The exotics lasted this way for months too, because nobody really had them. It was like seeing someone from 20 years in the future rocking some new tech, except it's Crucible, and you're getting run over by the same Spectra Blade Hunter for the 30th time in the match. Oh, that's the other part of this exotic too? Spectra Blades. These things fucked in Forsaken. Almost unkillable and super. Being able to see through walls for a very long time, and with the super lasting more than double the time it does now. I can't stress enough how busted these exotics were, but I also can't stress enough how busted these subclasses were. This is the combo that Destiny 2 needed badly for year 2 though, because year 1 was just boring. Let's leave Hunters alone for a second and move on to Titans. Yeah, Titans! You had, well, uh, let's see. There's that stupid exotic helmet I have saved for a different video of its own. And oh my lord, Ursa Furiosa. An exotic that is still so powerful, it might as well be where it was? Ursa was a part of the new Sentinel Middle Tree subclass, and its perk was simple. Super gain for damage taken to the shield. Easy enough, right? Well, this one was actually underperforming in raids and nightfalls and patrols and but in pvp one bullet to the shield and super bungie did not test any of these this was also my first forsaken exotic meaning that if a youtuber talks about this exotic being too powerful i have to blame them for getting it nerfed down the line i don't make the rules that's just that's just how it is here's a fun one an exotic that wasn't broken for titans off the rip but became broken over time was Antaeus Wards, an exotic that when sliding deflected bullets from the other team and refunded super every time you did it. Now, these were bugged and not working correctly on release, but the reason I'm including these here is because later down the road, when fixed, it became forsaken again. Deflecting supers became common ground, stack some mods to regain even more super energy, throw on Ursas when you had super, and you're never going to be in a normal gunfight again. Warlocks. We have a 
the exotics that are very still just still powerful and borderline broken but just no i didn't say anything let's start with everyone's favorite phoenix protocol phoenix protocol works by giving you super energy every time you get a kill in the well and it still works the same way and damn near gives the same energy it used to but back in forsaken era well of radiance used to give a stronger damage buff stacked with melee ability for damage and with phoenix on you got enough super to put a well down swap to a different subclass to get kills with and pop the other subclasses super while still being in the well that's how strong this used to be and was everyone's number one pick for raids once it came out you used to even be able to put down the well with luna faction boots then swap to phoenix for infinite reload and ability to get your well back this one who was in charge you know what i don't even want to know who's in charge i i just i don't want to know anymore moving on to another warlock exotic controverse holds now i know what you're thinking evan what listen bucko this was a part of the new Nova Warp subclass back in Forsaken, and not only was that a case of marinated PTSD, these were essential to that class. We're talking a really quick draw time, insane range and kill potential, and a full grenade back almost every time you threw one. Side benefit that was slept on too, but very much used in the world's first Crown of Sorrow raid, was the damage resistance with these. I still think this is my favorite Warlock exotic we have in the game, but in Forsaken, it broke the game pretty damn badly. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are the main ones and the Forsaken exotics that still hold up to this day. How many times when you're playing the game is someone like, throw on Geomags, throw on Phoenix Protocol, throw on Ursas? I really don't like being cynical here when it comes to the game or these videos, but to me, it's pretty obvious that these were made in a clear effort to get the player base back and made over the top and rare to get Destiny players to drop some money on Forsaken. I actually love this era the most out of any in Destiny, but it's pretty common sense, right? New abilities, exotics, activities being way better, stronger, busted in an effort to get the consumer to spend money on the game. Unfortunately with these, Bungie may have hit them so hard that the cracks of the game started to show. Over time in this era, nobody was enjoying getting steamrolled by supers all game long. Raid bosses died faster than I can even blink, and balance look, looked like this. But that brings me to the final chapter of today's video. The little dessert after the main course. The epilogue of the video. The... I feel like Bungie has struck a nice balance these days, making exotics that take a little more thought and effort to make pop off. In the Beyond Light era, I found myself using more exotics than ever before, not just crutching on one to be effective, but there's still some busted fun exotics too, like Curious of the Fallen Star for Titans making short work of bosses, those fish boots for hunters that make us smack bosses down and are now shelved, and warlocks having those rift boots that are very strong too. Every season, it feels like Bungie is somehow finding a way to get more creative with their seasonal exotics. But hold up. This is also year seven, and that means it's also time for Bungie to give us more places to see more exotics shine. I don't want to find myself in a Grandmaster Nightfall using the same stuff I used in 2018. In fact, Shadowkeep's exotics were pretty bad, and I can't even get myself to think of anywhere I'd use most of them. Dodging leaves behind an explosive that detonates after a short delay, damaging enemies around it? That sounds pretty cool. Alright, let's see it. Oh, the ball. That did fine. In my opinion, it's time for Bungie to take some action and give their players more places to use exotics, encourage more build variety, give more of them a facelift, make use of the perks and the activities, boost them up, something man! There can't be hundreds of armor pieces in the game for the player base to only want to use like 5 or 6 of them. That just ain't right in my opinion. Final thoughts, some exotic armor is great, some okay, most bad. 
Let's change that so Evan F can make some more videos about this game. Wow, that sounded really cringy. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it a lot. Make sure to check out the limited time merch made by the talented Nogi Sun if you did enjoy this video. And hey, maybe you want to scoop up some Matrix merch. Her links are in the description as well as the merch links. And subscribe if you're new here. Until next time, thank you to all my patrons. Thank you to everybody that has checked it out. Thank you everybody for just watching the video, making it this far. And enjoy the bloopers. I'll see you guys next time. Hmm. How long till he notices? I need to take... What the shit? I was like... I was in the menu. When did you do this? <laughs> that was... That was my second attempt, because the first attempt you went flying off the side. I died and didn't recruit. Ship. You're a f***ing idiot. Like, these guys are oh actually just dodging. God.